a little with Groovy and Groovy ecosystem, but I think the topic is pretty important for all uh, developers. And let's start with a simple tweet that shown up a few months ago. And Vincent actually posted something that uh, I think is pretty common to, to all of us. So how many of you, please raise your hands, how many of you have been in similar situation, not specifically the same use cases, but someone who just started blogging and dropped it? Actually, almost all of us. So we know exactly this Vincent curse, his pain. And uh, I've been like a three or four times in this situation before. And uh, at some point of time, I just asked myself, okay, why I failed blogging? I tried different solutions. I run WordPress. I was using Medium for some time. I even used Blogspot back in the days. And I started wondering why all these solutions didn't work for me pretty well. And uh, I know what motivates me, but I had to check what drives me when it comes to bl not, not only blogging, but running my career as a software developer. And then I realized that I spent majority of my time using software development tools. And this is, of course, some very specific day when I spend like a 71% of my time during the day in some IntelliJ idea, but also using some other different uh, development tools. But this showed me that I'm driven by software development. I'm driven by um, things that are related to software development. And like WordPress, Visvik editors, they are very far from, from that. So I wondered, what if I use things like IntelliJ IDEA, the editor of my choice? What if I use ASCII Dog and ASCII Doctor? What if I use GitHub? And maybe some flavor of continuous integration. And what would happen if I would build my blogging platform using those open source tools? And I have to tell you that it worked for me. Uh, I finally succeeded. I didn't wrote first blog, blog post and just dropped it. It helped me successfully blog for almost two years now. And with this talk, I would like to share with you some of these uh, experiences. So what I want to show you today is I want to show you some of the tools that exist, open source tools that you could use. These are not the best tools. These are not the only tools that exist. These are just some of them that I found useful and that helped me uh, stay on track in blogging as a software developer. And I want to show you how I use these tools so I can blog pretty regularly. And I think this presentation will also tell you why there is no excuse to not blog when you are a software, develop uh, when, when you are a software developer. But what I, don't tell you, what I want to tell you is how to become rich from blogging. And not because I'm greedy and I don't want to share this uh, knowledge with you, but just because I don't earn money on blogging, I just do it because I really, I'm really passionate about, uh, about that. So my name is Szymon Stępniak, and I blog at ePrintStackTrace.blog, where I share my experiences, my experiments I do with a bunch of different technologies, mostly groovy, but not only. On a daily basis, I'm a continuous delivery architect at Upwork. Any freelancers here, by the way? Is there anyone who uses Upwork or used earlier? Uh, Vladimir used, perfect. And I'm also a Torun Java user group founder, one of the most vibrant uh, Torun Java user communities in Poland. I use tw Twitter pretty much, so you can check my, uh, my uh, stream. So let's start with defining some of the ingredients and uh, definitions. So what this whole blogging from IDE actually means? The first one, uh, the, the first thing we need to define is that in this approach, everything is a code. So we can say that this is like a blog as a code. And uh, we don't only use a code, but we also use some version control system to version it. For instance, Git and GitHub, which is pretty nice uh, to do it. And when I say that everything is source code, what I exactly mean? So for instance, here you can see a listing of my blog root folder. And what you will find here, you will find some themes, you will find some sources 
like content stored as a sources, but you will also find some configuration files for deployment, for building a block. And let, let's look at those in a more detailed way. So if you take a look at themes, this is pretty obvious that when we use WordPress or other blogging platform, we sometimes edit some CSS, we add some JavaScripts, maybe we even edit templates to add some uh, things to our blog. Here, for instance, I use Jade, which is it's like a Python for HTML. The syntax looks pretty similar to Python, but it generates HTML. And I use this because I wanted to learn it. Oh, of course, you will find some assets like CSS, as images, JavaScripts. So this is, if we say blog as a code, this is pretty obvious that this is a code part. But if we take a look at the sources folder, and if we list, list only ASCII doc files from sources folder, and speci specifically from coming from uh, March and April this year, you will see that all blogs are written in ASCII doc. So the content, again, this is a source code. We just store it in our repository. And if it comes to configuration, if we open config YAML file, you will see because there is no database involved, there are no integration points with some services. Here, again, configuration is also um, stored as a code. So. If everything is a source code, how to make use of it? Because, because we can just put those text files, ASCII doc, YAML files, how to make real use of those files. So we need a compiler, we need static site generator. And uh, today I want to show you one of them, but before we uh, go there, you need to imagine that the whole thing is about taking some ASCII doc document, this is for instance one of the blog posts represented as ASCII doc, this compiler, it takes it, it compiles it to HTML form. So it takes themes, all these CSS files, it creates this HTML form. So the blog post may look like this in a web browser. I use Hexo.js, uh, but there is no specific reason why you also should use Hexo. Like back in 2015, that was one of the fastest solutions. There was Octopress, there was JBake, a few other platforms, but Hexo.js is written in Node.js, and it was really blazing fast uh, back in the days. Today, I think there are more uh, sophisticated solutions uh, and better alternatives to Hexo. But let me show you how this tool actually works. So we will simply write some demo uh, during this uh, presentation. But before we go into IntelliJ ID, let me show you some of the flow what I do. So in my public open repository on GitHub, I use GitHub issues to just put some post ideas. Whatever just come to my mind, I just if I knew that, okay, I would, I would like to write something about that, I, would ju I just post it as a GitHub issue. And for instance, I have this issue created to write some uh, blog posts about GreatConf uh, Europe 2019. And I use... <laughs> I didn't r wrote it so far, so you will cheer me after I, I, I do it. And I also use this uh, GitHub projects, Git, uh, Kanban, so I can see, I can put some tasks in progress. Uh, when, uh, when it's done, I use those one month milestones, so I always uh, have uh, my uh, Kanban board representing uh, recent uh, months. So as you can see here, in May, I didn't done anything, which is not cool, because I was working on this updating GraalVM posts. Uh, so we have this ticket created here. It's in progress. And now let's see how we can work with this. And because I won't publish this blog post today, we will just uh, see some ASCII doctor in action. So what we can do is we can start with creating a simple branch. Okay, because I don't want to push to develop so it, it gets published already. So let's create just post 122, great conf. Okay, and now Hexo is, um, comes with pretty fast and fine uh, CLI. So if we use Hexo, we have some uh, comment options here, and one of them is we can create a post with given title, for instance, great conf. Great conf 2019 recap. We can create it. The file was created. Now we can open it. 
here ASCII doc file is created. Let me pick, hide it here. So here we have just an empty ASCII doc file. What you see here, here are some metadata. I'll stop. Which is title, date, tag. So let's add, firstly, let's start with some tags. We can add great conf. Of course, this is like a groovy related. We can add conference. We can even add Copenhagen. I hope I didn't make any typo. We can add it to specific category. Let's say the category is conferences. And let's write something. This is blog post about Oh, so great conf EU 2019. And let's add a URL here, which in ASCII doc, this is simply this. Okay. We wrote something and let's see what does it look like. So what we can do, Hexo has this comment called Hexo server. And don't worry, it, f it compiles uh, static HTML, but this Hexo server, this is the development server that allows us to do something like just-in-time compilation. I will be um, modifying this article and I will be seeing all these changes done automatically. So it started here on port 4000 and if I open it in web browser, you will see that this blog post was just, uh, just created. So we can go here, we can see something like this. And now if I go back to our ASCII doc document, let's say we will add a header uh, to, and we can add something like lorem ipsum, dollar whatever. If I go back here, it already uh, is already generated because this Hexo server observes only those files that are affected by my changes, and it automatically regenerates all of them. And the cool thing about uh, ASCII Doctor is that we can simply add cool-looking source codes, which this is pretty important for us as the software developers. So what we can do is we can create, or actually I will use this template for this because the uh, IntelliJ idea comes with some pretty cool live templates. So for instance, uh, SKDoc source will create this for me so I it can speed up uh, things a little bit. And let's create some very simple hello class and that has this method, I don't know, say, and then just print lines. Hello, okay, let's see what does it look like. Let me just make it a little bit bigger for you. So you can see that we have pretty nicely formatted source code here. And that's not a, uh, like we can do even better because if we have a file, we could just add include macro. So I can, for instance, add here config yaml file and the content of, uh, content of config yaml file will show up here. So I can just put my source code next to my blog. I can just simply include parts that I'm interested in. Of course, ASCII Doctor has this uh, feature that you can specify which uh, the, the content between specific tag has to be included, starting from line, this and that. This is pretty powerful feature. And if it comes to, let's say, I need to add some image, I can also add and I can create my own live template so I can make my life much easier. So you can see here, I will add one like Micronaut J Profiler PNG, I think we, I have this image here, so I can just simply add it, I can see it right over here. So when I'm done with, let's say, writing this uh, blog post, what I usually do is I can just, po I can just um, comment to my repository. We can do it here, and maybe I can even push it, because right now I'm on this Mm, feature branch for this post, so I'm happy because I can just publish this draft to remote repository and uh, my CI server will handle it, but it, it won't publish it. And why, you will see in just a second. More about ASCII Doctor you will find in the handout to this presentation, so you can learn more about syntax, how cool it is to use ASCII Doc. Oh, and I forgot about uh, one more thing here, because this is important. We are on great conf, so let's add one thing. I think it was note. When you are at great conf, you need to taste 
great beer, of course. And we can add an icon of beer here. And we also have all these cool looking captions so we can add notes, warnings, everything. And basically, here what I use, I use very default ASCII doctor CSSs. So you can just have great looking blog uh, without putting much effort and you can have this like a ebook like experience. Like I don't use any pop-ups, advertisement, etc. So we can just focus on reading cool content. Okay, but that's the demo part. And the question is, is Hexo the only solution or is it the best? I mentioned earlier, it's not the best one. There are many competitors on this market. And for instance, you can check staticgen.com website, which is the ranking of most probably all existing um, static site generators. So we can pick, uh, for instance, static generator with specific, um, that uses specific language. For instance, yesterday, uh, Jacob was uh, showing uh, his talk about JBake and Gradle. So we can use Java plus Gradle and even the Groovy Markup uh, template language so you can write your you can mm, maintain your templates using Groovy language, for instance. Here I use Node.js, so I have to play around with JavaScript, which is sometimes not so funny, but yeah. There's this Hugo on this list. Hugo is most probably the fastest one. Hugo can generate static, web, static page uh, in less than one millisecond. So if you have like uh, 100 pages to generate, it will do it in approximately 100 milliseconds, which is pretty nice. And uh, this awesome, there is this awesome static generators website where you can find all information about static site generators, rankings uh, grouped by specific languages, some blog posts that explain which one is better than other, using different frameworks, etc. So let's summarize this part. All we need for our source code is Git repository. That's it. We don't need any database. It's which, what runs on your uh, laptop, it runs the same on the host target machine. You can pick any, your favorite uh, text format. You can start with Markdown. You can you pick ASCII doc. And I think you could even use things like LaTeX or any other plain text formats. And the most important thing is just to start writing blog posts. If you have uh, this GitHub repository, if you uh, just publish Markdown in your even private repository, it will be formatted for you. You don't have to publish this right away. You can just write it. You can see uh, what does it look like. You can ask your friend for a review. And then when you are confident that this, uh, this is what you would like to publish, then you can just pick one of those static site generators. Or you can use Jekyll, which is built in uh, in GitHub pages, if you don't want to play around with, you know, with configuring it. And most probably, you should have fun doing this. Uh, and basically, this whole part, of, of course, you can over-engineer it. You can just do, uh, you can put much, uh, too, too much effort into it. But I think this is pretty, pretty worth it. So when your blog is ready, when you uh, created some of the uh, blog posts, it's time to deploy them. And how we can deploy those uh, those static site mm, static HTML sites? One of the tools that you can use, and you should probably consider it, is GitHub Pages. This is the free to use, largest, most probably the largest free hosting that exists. And all you have to do is you you need to create this repos repository that follows your username, like your username GitHub.io, and it means that your master branch by default. It will share everything files publicly. You can use different branches to store your source codes, but in master you can put generated files. If you use Hexo, Hexo has this Hexo deployer uh, Git plugin, which automatically generates uh, final static HTML and it pushes it to a given repository and to a given branch. And in Hexo, it looks pretty like this. So when I'm finished with, um, with a blog post, I can just do Hexo deploy. It will generate files and it will push it to a remote repository. It will mark it with specific commit message so I can see when the site was updated. I see which files were changed, like here I just updated uh, one blog post and I just added something to 404 page. And I see that it was pushed to master. 
But this is how I can do it from my console, from my local computer. And the question is, is there any way to do it like uh, in a more automated way using CI servers? And the, question, the, the answer is yes, it's possible. You can, for instance, mm, integrate your blog post with Travis CI or, or Cir Circle CI, whatever um, cloud solution you, you pick. And uh, with Hexo, the whole thing is, to, and not only with Hexo, but with all static site generators, it's all a matter of adding this Travis YAML file, which just contains, like in case of Hexo, you just run Hexo generate as your build command because you just want to make sure that the blog generates correctly. And you can specify this deploy section, and in this deploy section you can specify which branch deploys your generated blog. Like in my case, whenever I push something to develop, it gets generated and it gets published uh, automatically through a CI server. But the question is, do we really need it? Like, uh, do we need this Travis CI or, or anything like that? Of course the answer is no, we don't need uh, such thing. But there are a few benefits that, uh, that are worth considering. The first of all is that you can just write a blog post, whatever, just push it to remote repository, and you can just close your laptop and the, the CI, CI server will handle deployment for you. And of course, you can, in this case, you can publish any blog post from anywhere. The, the only thing you need is a Git client or web browser, because you can just put your uh, blog post directly on a GitHub repository through web browser. You just push it to, mm, you save it in develop branch or any other branch and it just gets published for you. But of course the downside is that uh, if I run this deploy command from my local computer, it takes approximately uh, 40 seconds to finish and to publish my article. When I do it from CI server, it takes something like a three minutes because Travis has to create this container for us. Even though I cache node uh, modules folder, it still has to, it has to run npm install, stuff like that, so it consumes, uh, it consumes some time. Now when we deployed our blog, it lives in production. It's like a static HTML website, uses GitHub pages. The question is, is there anything that we should be worried about wh when it comes to this, this website? Because we may think that we run just static HTML, uh, it doesn't require any sophisticated website, uh, web server, sorry. And that's true, because there are no processing on a web server. But the thing is, there are some tools that are worth considering. Like for instance, Cloudflare. Uh, Cloudflare doesn't pay me for this advertisement. I just uh, really like their product. I use it for two years and I'm very happy and I just want to share, share it with you so you can also benefit from using uh, Cloudflare for free. But because what Cloudflare is, uh, in normal case, let's say if you um, post your, uh, host your blog on a GitHub IO, your client just gets the content from GitHub IO server. When you, when you set up your Cloudflare account with your domain, Cloudflare plays the role of a proxy server. So now all clients get the content from Cloudflare Content Delivery Network. The setup is fairly simple. Uh, you just need to specify, set up DNS for your domain. And I can tell you that uh, I did it for, for the first time like two years ago, uh, and I had to do it again for my different domain and even though I forget everything about that, I was able to do it in less than two minutes. Uh, it's, it's really fairly, fairly simple. And when we have this DNS uh, set up, we get SSL certificate for free. It's signed by Cloudflare. Of course, you can use Let's Encrypt. The GitHub Pages also has SSL certificate. Some time ago, uh, GitHub Pages uh, supported SSL certificates only for blogs when they were accessed from GitHub IO. So there was no support for custom domains. It works right now, but you can still use this uh, SSL that is enabled by default uh, for you in Cloudflare. And Cloudflare also offers you a firewall. Because some web crawlers may try to scrape your blog very like intensively, and Cloudflare will just cut them out. And if Cloudflare uh, servers, when they see that there is some like uh, uh, traffic that does not look like a regular user, they will start challenging them. For instance, it will just display some like JavaScript puzzle that you have to pick images with cats, for instance. So these web crawlers, web craw crawlers that are not meant to scrape your website intensively, they will be just dropped down automatically. 
You also get caching, so all your content gets distributed over worldwide content delivery network. And there is also this cool feature called Always Online. If your host, is it GitHub Pages or any other server, goes down, Cloudflare still can serve your uh, blog um, until your host server gets up. And this is critical if it comes to HTML websites because there is no need for any server interactions. So your blog just remains working uh, as it works from your host server. So there is no downtime for your blog readers. And there is one very important feature that comes with Cloudflare called page rules. And to give you a context, when I started my blog, I added this pretty stupid URL format. So I added this year slash month slash title. And uh, after a few months later, I just realized that this is just noise. I shouldn't add this because uh, even uh, Google, when, uh, when it indexes your website, when it shows results, it always cuts it. So it does not show it to, to, to users. So what I wanted to get is something like this. Simple, shorter URLs, better for SEO. Mm, so I wanted to do it. And with Hexo, it was fairly simple because I could go to config YAML. There is this permalink uh, configuration option. Uh, this, is, this was the initial value. And I could just remove it, redeploy uh, my blog, and everything would be uh, fine. But there was a problem. Of course, those previously uh, indexed files with this um, year, month, and title, they remain in Google Index. And in this case, actually, Google did a great job because after two days, Index was uh, re-indexed, so old links disappeared. But there was a problem. GraalVM listed two of my articles on their website, and I started receiving pretty significant traffic coming from GraalVM. And if I just you know, remove this uh, year and month from URLs, all these users will get 404. So th that would look pretty, pretty primitive. So I wanted to avoid that. And page rules helped me with that because page rules is very like a limited version of mod rewrite. So it doesn't support regular expressions. There is only this asterisk wildcard, but you can actually rewrite uh, your um, URLs to a new format. So as you can see here, I was able to just rewrite the old pattern to a new one with this uh, um, permanent redirect HTTP status. So Google was also satisfied with that. And of course, you can you get some like a traffic information. You can see how many ter uh, megabytes or gigabytes of data uh, your users downloaded in totally. How many users you get uh, to, to to Cloudflare. You can also see how many uh, suspicious users were dropped by by Cloudflare. So this is also pretty. It doesn't work as well as Google Analytics because here you get like a all the requests. A single user can just trigger 100 requests if, if, it, if he goes from uh, through all your blog. Uh, but it can give you some, some nice, nice information. So to sum this uh, part up, with Cloudflare, what you get is you get SSL for free. You also, by default, get HTTP2. So you will get some better performance if it comes to um, serving your, your blog, which is also very important because uh, SEO expert, experts say that the, your website performance has significant, um, is significant for your um, index position. So you will get better page rank if your website is not so slow, but it, it can serve content much, much faster. Of course, you, can, you, you get this caching for free with content worldwide content delivery network. This is also important. Page rules, uh, which I show you with, as a limited alternative uh, to mod rewrite. The firewall, some analytics, and much more. And the cool, cool information is that you get it all for free. There are some paid options, uh, but I can tell you that I used this extensively for two years. I didn't have to pay for anything uh, so far. So this is pretty, mm, pretty interesting as well. So we see, we, we saw what's the source code? What does this blog as a code mean? Uh, we saw how the deployment part works. So what does it look like? We see what are the tools that are helpful if it comes to living in production. But now it's time to answer this most important question is, 
why why we should do this like why we should blog as a software developers what are the benefits and i don't know what are your motivations i don't know if you uh what, what were your motivations when you start your first blog that most probably failed like we all did but what i've learned is that blogging actually helped me learning new things because what i did was i ran some experiments when i was uh, playing around with graal vm i spent a lot of time uh, with graal vm um, i was able to write uh, blog posts about that i get some feedback from people from graal vm so they explain me hey you could do this to do better with that i said fine that's great they added my articles to their website so it also like built my confidence that i did actually a pretty great job I had a lot of fun doing this. I just w when I do those experiments, I collect the data from from those experiments, and I try I, I treat this as a documentation. So I document the whole process. I want to this way. I learn much faster. I learn much better because uh, it improves the way I remember things. But it's not only about me and what I can learn, but, I, but it's also about teaching other people uh, things. So because, like. Every day, uh, more than 300 people uh, uh, comes to my blog for a single query from uh, Google Search, which is f every day f more than 300 software engineers, they don't know how to partition list in Java 8. And it's, if I show you the, the, the traffic graph, it's always, it starts on Monday and it ends on Friday. Weekends, uh, on weekends, people search for things like Groovy, like GraalVM, and stuff like that. And w when you learn by blogging, you also, because the whole point is to take this pretty complex thing, something that we don't know uh, pretty well mm, when we start writing this blog post, and then it's all about decomposing it, explaining with the easiest possible way so someone who is behind us can actually ex uh, uh, can understand that and benefit from our blog. And uh, it's also like when you do this blogging, a blog as a code, when you do it as an open so almost open source project, you contribute to community, you contribute to open source, and what I can tell you is that your motivation to do more contribution increases. And it was like in my case, when I started blogging on my GitHub um, account, I started like looking more for, for more like open source opportunities to, to contribute. So would it work for you? I don't know. I don't know your motivations. I don't know if this is something that can drive you to, to blogging. But what I can tell you is, and this is one of the most important things, it's much easier if we start small. And this done is better than perfect, this is the best quote I ever heard uh, when it comes to blogging. If you, and because I used GitHub, I can always get back to my first, very first comment. I can see what my blog looked like uh, when I published my first blog post. I didn't spend time on uh, installing some search plugin because there was only one post. So it didn't make any sense to add search to my blog. I didn't add uh, like this related post section because there was only one blog post. So why should I spend time on that? I only focused to create the first blog post. I was pretty uh, like excited uh, about this blog post. I published it and that was fine. Then I wrote second one, the third one. And uh, after, like, I don't have, right now I am, have like more than 40 blog posts on my, uh, on ePrison Structure's blog. I still don't have any search. I added like this tax cloud so it's easier to uh, navigate over the over blog. And when I had like a 15 blog posts, I, o I added this um, um, featured blog posts so you can read more because I've seen that when people come to this uh, how to split, how to partition Java uh, list in Java 8, they were just dropping. There, there was nothing uh, for them to read more. So I added the section related posts. So I've seen the conversion that they, okay, they, they didn't know how to the partition list in Java 8, but they also read something about JMH benchmarking or other things like, uh, so I could see with Google Analytics what the traffic, uh, w w what does it look like. 
And I also encourage you to do the same. Like, uh, don't start thinking about, okay, I need this search, I need to add this related posts, pop up, I need to add newsletter, I need to add, like, a buy my course, or things like that. No, just focus on content and things will go well for you. That's all from my side. There is this handout on um, GitHub. You will, you will find slides, you will find more resources. Uh, this link should be posted on Twitter in something like 10 minutes or, uh, or so. So you can uh, check it out, see. And if you start blogging anytime, maybe you're not encouraged by this presentation, but when you start your blog, uh, post me a message. I would like to see your blog. I will, if you are afraid that you won't have any readers, I will be at least your first reader. Maybe not first, but maybe second or third reader. So thank you very much. We have like 10 minutes for questions. So if you have one, I will answer them. Yes, yes. So the question is how to handle RSS feeds. Hexo has plugin for RSS feeds. So it generates uh, Atom XML. Uh, and it, there is also this, I can even sh show you. There is also this a plugin called it's even called like a SEO, SEO friendly sitemap. So what it uh, so it, it generates this um, uh, no it's not a sitemap it's here a feed a feed a feed XML so it generates Atom XML for you you can specify if you want to a uh, RSS file then you can just add it to feed burner or anything like that so we can get RSS feeds for you Sergio. So the first question was, if I consider writing my own static site generator, no. <laughs> this is just like, uh, uh, there, when I consider blogging for the first time using this approach, I tried Octopress, but it was like in Ruby, it was pretty slow. There were not that many plugins. It looked not that well. So someone posted this hexo on Twitter, uh, and I just give it a try and see, okay, this looks pretty fine. And basically, if you go to Hexo.js website, there, is, there are those, I think, four comments. So it can be just bootstrapped in less than two minutes. And it actually, you have your, your, your blog with some default theme, but it looks pretty well. And the second question was about scheduling when I write blog posts and stuff like that. I don't have any specific schedule. That's why I use this uh, here on a GitHub. That's why I use issues. So whenever something comes to my mind, I always go to GitHub issues and I just create this post idea here. So I can just add some more context if I need. Uh, but there was like a one uh, specific use case when I was dealing with Ratpack and GraalVM. I've spent, it was, I was fighting with this for three weeks or something, there were so stupid errors. I couldn't like uh, make it running. Uh, I remember Dan was also tried to do it. He finally make it working, but he'd never shared his approach. And there was one day when I finally make it running, my Ratpack application was compiled to GraalVM native image. It was like 10 minutes after midnight. And I said, oh shit, I, I cannot go sleep right now. I just need to write it down because I have everything in my mind. So I just sit down, it took me like three hours to phrase my mind. I was, of course, I was pretty, I, I wasn't that fresh, so it took me quite a while. But I just wrote everything down and I think I, I published it something around like a 4 a.m. But usually I just try to put those ideas. When I, have, when I find time, when I find inspiration, I just, uh, I just start writing. And, Usually, I start with those experiments. So I need to some data, I need to some code that works. I make some comparisons. I run some, um, like I create some charts, stuff like that. So then when I have this data, I just sit down and, and write a blog post for that.
Like, could you repeat, please? Do you impose yourself? Like, how do you like Okay, so the question is if there is like a, if I run for some fixed number of uh, blog posts per week or month. No, definitely not. I tried like uh, setting this fixed number like five blog posts a month. Uh, but I rarely hit this number because like different things happens around. So sometimes like I can write like six or seven blog posts a month. But then like in May I wrote uh, just a single one. A great conf uh, Europe 2019 recap will be the uh, second uh, blog post written in May. So maybe I will just write something else uh, in this month, but most probably not. Like in June I most probably end with three blog posts maybe. It depends on what happens because, like, when the Graal VM uh, thing was happening, there were multiple updates in release candidate phase. So I had this uh, subject, so I could uh, experiment more. Then I have some. Uh, then I had some data, so I could update my blog post. I could write more about that. So it was also driven by what happens uh, in the industry. Okay. Here's a question. Thank you. So the question is, uh, did I consider a podcast? No, there is one run by this gentleman here. There is also like a, a Ken Cousin runs Groovy podcast. Uh, I was actually added some time ago, I added to my blog YouTube channel with some short videos because there are plenty. What I found was that there are some use cases where just shooting a short video, like t two or three minutes, with showing, even with speed up, just to like with compiling those native images in GraalVM, it, it takes just uh, a long time. So I found that if I record a short video, just so I can attach it as a supplementary material to, to the text, then I, I've seen that people actually enjoyed it. Because, for instance, there is this issue, uh, not issue, SDK Man supports uh, GraalVM Community Edition, there is no enterprise edition support, but it's very easy to add it to SDK Man. So I just recorded two minutes video showing exactly how to do it. So you can just, instead of reading a blog post, you can simply watch short video uh, and uh, you, you have the same experience. Or m maybe even better, if you prefer watching videos, it will work for you better. And I've seen that some people come from YouTube, uh, some people reaches to YouTube for blogs, so yeah. And I think about m like uh, making more usage from YouTube, maybe like in next month or something like that, if if time, uh, if there will be a time to do this. Thank you. Any more question, Sergio? Again. Do you have comments in yes, I use discuss. Yeah. There was one comment very specific some time ago uh, but i will uh, i will tell this story after uh, this talk anyway yes they are valuable uh, not many people comment uh, I've, uh, this this is what i can tell you like compared conversion how many people read specific blog posts and how many people uh, leave comments this is like uh, less than 1% of of readers uh, but there are like a, it always like motivates you more if someone just writes you. I get this comment. Someone wrote, wrote me that this article about Micronaut async helped me passing through some uh, job interview because he did um, example with Micronaut and this article helps helps him. So this is pretty uh, pretty nice to to see that your blog post actually m m made a change in someone's life. So. This is this is this is interesting, yeah. No, no, there are like a, so the question is if there are like a, uh, if people add some. Okay.
Yeah. I can tell you that in my case, uh, comments like that when someone asks, okay, how to do this, I, I had like a, maybe it's like a 3% of all comments like that, so this is like not, not my problem. It would be if people after reading the, the blog post started asking, okay, and how to do this and how to do that because you didn't explain more or you didn't go much deeper uh, into explanation and so forth. So I had like a, I remember there was one in this uh, ja how to partition Java list, uh, in uh, how to partition list in Java 8. There was someone who asked, okay, but how to convert the result to array? This is so simple, like just you, you get the list and there are plenty articles uh, online explaining how to um, transform a list of objects into array of objects. If someone just asked this, this question. I answered it like a six months later when I found time for that. The question, you know... Well, I think this is the someone who asks question. It's his or her responsibility to actually mm, interest you to answer this question. This is like with Stack Overflow. I've seen s people who just copy paste Jira tickets to Stack Overflow. I watch uh, a few tags on Stack Overflow. I answer many questions there. But when I see that someone just copy pasted, and I even see G Jira ID <laughs> in question. I I don't feel like uh, I'm just uh, I should answer this question because someone who asked this question didn't put any effort to to actually like uh, attract you to answer this question. So when there are like a how to do this because it doesn't work on my machine blah blah blah. I don't care about that. Just put some effort to try to attract me so we can we can discuss about your problem. It gave me a few, so I think it's like a, I even I even get uh, mm, this question about writing a book from a huge uh, publisher on topic that I was pretty surprised that they asked me about that. But there are some opportunities, definitely. I think I even think that like a a single well written blog post is better than any CV or resume you, you create because it shows actually how you think, how you solve problems, how you deconstruct complex, uh, complex pr problems into simple uh, solutions. Because in CV or resume, we can just put everything. I can say I'm a Java expert, but what does it mean? Like, as a, am I expert like, I don't know, Brian Goetze? Or am I expert like, I don't know, boss from my previous job? This is like, just it doesn't say anything, but if, if someone actually reads my blog, sees how I think, how I solve problems, how I communicate. Because it's also important if my communication is clean, clear enough so I can express my, myself uh, clearly, uh, it, tells much, it says much more about me as a software developer, as a problem sol solver, uh, instead of just... I, I didn't update my CV for four years, or even more. No, four years, something like that. And I don't plan to do it. And I will change my job most probably uh, sometime, but uh, without updating my CV, that's for sure. Okay, we run out of time. If you have any more questions, uh, I'm still here. Uh, we can discuss uh, and I can tell you more horror stories privately, something that cannot be recorded on the video. So thank you again and enjoy the conference.